Hey guys, it is now fall season and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Mushrooms are one of the many items that people like to draw when we transition into fall. So today, we're going to be drawing this cute mushroom and it's going to be very easy. Let's get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Sublime Watercolor Pack and the Vintage Canvas. Everything will be linked below. I've already drawn a sketch for you guys, so you can download that along with the color palette and insert it like this. Go to Add and insert a photo. After you insert the sketch, you'll be able to see it in the layers panel like here. And then I'll make a new layer on top to start coloring. Now we'll select the color. We'll use this salmon pink for the mushroom top. And I'm going to use the hard edge round brush for this. And sorry guys, I forgot to show that to you. <laughs> For some reason but you'll be able to find the hard edge brown brush from my brush kit and as you can see this brush is very special in the way that it looks like real watercolor when it dries so if you really want to keep that hard edge effect then you'll really want to make sure that you don't color outside of these pencil lines because if you end up coloring outside and you end up erasing that you'll lose the hard edge effect. So I'm going to color the entire top but leave out these little patterns because they need to be white. Okay, now I have colored the entire top but you'll see that there's a lot of overlaps. So I'm going to use the basic blender and blend out these overlaps but that was way too big so I'm going to bring down the size and just simply smooth it out. When you blend it's also important that you don't blend outside of the pencil lines because you'll lose that hard edge effect. So I'm blending very carefully so that I stay within the colored element. Once you've blended everything, we'll want to make a new layer on top and make that a clipping mask. And to make the colors look vivid, I'm going to make this layer into color burn. As for the color, I'm going to use the red that's next to the salmon pink that we just used. And I'm going to just color it in in some places where it might have shadows or where it might look a little bit more dark and intense and you don't have to color the entire top you can just choose random places just to make it look more like real watercolor because real watercolor is never all that smooth right there are some pools with more paint and more pigment because this is a clipping mask layer coloring is really easy and convenient you really never get outside of these lines. If you think that you've added enough pigment and increased the color intensity, you can blend out some of the hard edge effect like what I'm doing here and then go over certain areas again to intensify it even more. Once you're happy with the colors, then we'll go back to the layers panel and merge the two layers together. And then we're going to make a new layer. And I'm going to use the hard edge round brush again, of course. And get the third oldest red. And I'm going to add some extra strokes here and there to show more color intensity. Unfortunately, the clipping mask layer isn't really effective in showing bolder colors, so this is the best corrective strategy in adding more color variations and intensity.
As usual, I'm going to blend all this out. At this point, I'm going to lower the opacity of this new layer because I just think that the color was way too bold. And this makes it look a lot more natural. And now we're going to start coloring the bottom portions. So let's make a new layer. And I'm going to pick out this beige color and start to color the bottom portions. Again, making sure that I don't color outside of the pencil lines to keep that hard edge effect. Now that the bottom portion is colored, I'm going to go back to the layers panel and select our sketch layer and bring down the opacity so that we can barely see our pencil sketch. And then we're going to go back to these layers and add more color to them. I'm going to select this color here and just like how we've added color to the mushroom top, we're going to gradually build up the color for the bottom portion to make it look more 3D and add darkness to areas that will have shadows. So I'm adding in a bit of this brownish gray color to the right side of the mushroom as well as textured areas. I'm just going to pretend that the light is hitting more of the left side and of course you're going to want to blend out these patterns just to make it look more natural. Of course, you are going to want to add some color to the top portion as the mushroom top acts as the roof and a shadow will be appearing right underneath. So I'm adding some color on the right side as well as the area that's right below the mushroom top. Blending can really make a big difference as the way you blend can make a certain piece of the painting have a certain shape. So make sure to blend in a way that forms the shape, in this case, like a cylinder shape. You can zoom out and observe how it's looking and go back in there again. For very intense areas, I've used a dark brown to show the shadows. At this stage, the mushroom looks pretty good, but I'm going to add one more layer and add one more element. And I'm going to pick out a orangey color, like an orangish yellow color. And I'm going to just add some spores on the bottom, and it doesn't have to be uh, any kind of a shape, it's a random shape. And I'm going to add it here and there. You don't have to add this part if you don't want to, but I thought it will make it look a little bit more interesting. Anyways, that is the end of this tutorial, guys. I really hope that you guys got something out of it and found it to be easy. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and like this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.